I got another series for y'all. All right. Suns, Mavericks. Listen. Are y'all are y'all enjoying this as much as I am? I am. I'm enjoying this mainly because I didn't foresee any of this happening. Mm-hmm. I, like Calvin, didn't see the Mavericks even getting out the first round. So the fact that they're, they're, they're tied 2-2 is kind of ridiculous. But also, uh, Dallas is losing. Chris Paul's family got their hands, they got hands put on them. Do you think Chris Paul is going to live that? Like, no, no, this ain't a championship, right? This ain't a championship. If it's a championship, I'm like, I don't know about, I don't know about Chris Paul. But in this, in this uh, second round of playoffs, do you think Chris Paul is going to allow himself or his teammates to lose to a fan base that it was harassing his family? Chris Paul, if he wasn't motivated, you know he's already motivated for no reason. If he wasn't motivated before, he's going to be stupid motivated. And he's already one of these all-time great leaders. He has those kind of like uh, qualities about himself. Listen, they're going to find a way to, to bring down Giannis, or not Giannis, bring down uh, Luca from this uh, this heavenly status he's on right now because of basketball playing. But like, I really think, <laughs> I really think the Mavericks fans are going to be the reason that they lose. <laughs> I really think so. Yeah, I can see that. And I think the for the leadership standpoint, the young guys on the Suns love Chris Paul. Like they do. Like run through a brick wall for me type love Chris Paul. So you know all of them. All it's of funny. them are just good. they they looking for blood at this point. It's funny, because not everybody's gonna be Chris Paul in terms of just like, you know. Mentality of how you approach the game, right? I mean, like on an everyday basis, on the game to game playoff basis. But then you give him reason for extra motivation on the role players because the role players haven't been playing as well for uh, Phoenix as the role players for Dallas has. But with that being the case, you're giving them reasons for the because when they play well, Phoenix. And Milwaukee have the two best role players in the in like the two best role playing squads in the NBA. So all of a sudden, Dallas fans are giving the reasons to like, oh no, we can't, we gotta get this mentality right. So I I really I I I, I put money on the fact that Phoenix is gonna win this series. I put money on it. Hey, we already know Chris Paul is a dirty player. Who he hitting in the nuts? Like who is he taking out of this game? I don't think he's taking anybody out. I think he'll get mad on foul, foul trouble from flopping. Yeah, I mean, shoot, that pretty much happened in his last game, man. I saw. That was sick. I don't think that's a good thing either. Like, for you to have your worst performance on their, like, home court. Yeah, um, but... But you got home court advantage. Not, it doesn't game really game. matter. Chris Paul also had weird games like that sometimes. Like, yeah, what? Chris Paul will have weird games like that sometimes. Where he will, he was just like, go 14 for 14 from the field. But all of a sudden, he'll be like, no, oh, he looks pedestrian. You know what I mean? But also, he's 37 and looks like a peanut. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, he's doing great right now for his age and where he is in his career. But. Why would you give a man like him and his mentality extra motivation to be a better leader than he already is? He's already an all-time great leader. That don't make no like. This is why bad fan bases will ruin a person's career. Like bad fan bases will ruin the career, can ruin the career of like really great players because of this stupid extra motivation stuff like that. You know what I mean? But also, I'm really glad that the Mavericks made it out of the first round because J.K. deserves a head coaching job. Yeah, look. Let's switch it over to the Dallas Mavericks. Luka has been incredible, but the person I feel like has just played himself into like a $100 million contract is Jalen Brunson. Brunson. I've liked Brunson since like his high school basketball days. Like, dude's always been a killer. He has a great story. Like, I don't know if y'all know this. His dad was like a NBA backup point guard for like 10 years. He played with Allen Iverson for a few of them. And... Jalen has this amazing story where he he was with his dad when he got cut. 
his his dad started crying. And Jalen like looks up at his dad and is like, Dad, I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna make everybody remember your name. Which is which is the cutest story I could possibly think of for any kid to like look at their parent and be like, I'm gonna make this up to you. And he's doing it, yo. Like ever since he got to Dallas, because he shoot, he got to Dallas, I wanna say the same year Luca did. And that was the same year I had season tickets. So I kind of got to watch him like grow up over like the three years that I was at in Dallas. And this feels right. Like he is playing at the level that I, I hate to do this because this is a bad comparison. These two players should not be in the same category considering like what all happened to them. This feels like what happened to campaign like last season where he went from laughing stock to, oh my goodness, this dude could probably be a starter on some of these teams. Literally how- before last year, campaign was only known for dancing with Russell Westbrook. That's literally what he was known for. Look, in getting kicked out of the league in what, before his rookie contract was even up as a lottery pick. Like that is a crazy thing. Jalen Brunson was never in the same situation but all of the winning he has done over his career, like, I am super glad and happy to see him having this success at this level because he's earned it and he deserves it. And this is Q Drake's God's plan. Like, this is this is what is supposed to happen, yo. And I'm, like, super excited to be watching, like, everything that's happening. Because you out here, little boy... Little boy in people, and I love it. Like him in, like there's gonna there's gonna be some issue with their coexisting between him and Luka Doncic. Like Luka Doncic is basically playing not rec league ball, but kind of like pickup. Like everybody else is on the team, but it's like no, nah, no, nah, just give me the ball. I'm, I'm gonna make something happen. And most likely that's going to be the score. Like, I really feel bad for Cam Johnson. He ain't had to do that little boy like that. And I'm talking about a man that's like 16, 220 plus. But that's what Luca is making people look like. Like he is picking his spots and nobody in Listen, that series can guard honest, him right now. I'm gonna be honest with you. How I feel about <clears throat> Luca Dungeons right now must be how like our parents feel about Lady Bird. Because I just don't get it. And when I say get it, I don't understand how he gets his shot off. I don't it's so slow looking. Him going to the realm is so slow looking. Everything he does is in slow motion, and I truly don't understand how he is so effective. And you know, I can come up with all these theories and kind of stuff, but that's all they would be. Theories. I don't get it. It's 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 a marvel to see, but I promise you, I said this last week, I was like, I could probably compare, like, I don't like Draymond, but I promise you, I probably wouldn't I wouldn't have liked uh, uh, Dennis Rodman. I don't get Luka, so I know I wouldn't have got Larry Bird. I don't understand how you are able to maneuver moving like you a Snapchat filter. <laughs> Look, I got I got two answers for you. Being six eight helps, and look look at thick. Like that's a that's a big dude, and it's not it is not even like it's not like, like, like he, he like kind of thick or thick. You said what? No, no, no. It, it ain't no kind of thick, but he but he he's a he's a big dude. Like you can like JJ Reddick was talking about this on his podcast when Luca takes his shirt off. It's not what you think. Like you probably think you're like some little little doughy preteenish body before it, like you hit puberty. Where it's like, oh, you got baby fat. Like apparently this man is like kind of jack. He's just not cut at all. So like that level of strength and footwork while being six eight. Who you at six eight? Like there is only a select few wing defenders that can stay in front of you, and like they have the height to really affect your shot. Those and dudes it, that we're talking and, about. And it helps. He got good footwork. Look, but once again, he is Larry Bird. Like, everything you just said, from all like the interviews I've watched and all the games I've watched, 
those are the exact same comparisons. I don't earn like it's wild. I'm like, yeah, he weirdly strong. Uh, he got crazy footwork. He's tall, and the release of his shot is like back here, right? It's like far behind his head. Not like you know, like a Steph Curry's is like right here, like on the side of his head. Yeah. Lucas is a tall, and he hold and he releases his ball very, very high. You know what I mean? And it's just like sometimes, like I'm not like crazy invested in certain teams uh, for the NBA. Like, I'm more like invested in players, but like I'd be like, how is it? I'd be yelling yeah, at my TV screen if I had a team going against him. Because he wants players like, man, I could do that. But I'm like, no, you can't. You can't guard nothing like that. But you feel like you should, which for our players, got to be frustrating. Yeah. That's got to be frustrating. Like, and I think the funniest part about all of this is that he's doing this against the Phoenix Suns. And when he got drafted, the very first game he had was against the Phoenix Suns. And he did not look good. In that first game, like everybody gave him work. Like DeAndre Ayton, like had a couple possessions where he was just bullying that man in the post. I do not know why he was guarding DeAndre Ayton. To be honest with you, but that happened. And now he he's the bully. Like every single defender that they put in front of him, he like, oh, I know exactly what to do with you. Like, yeah. like, like Ayton, you you not quick enough. I'm sorry, uh, Mikael Bridges. I don't care that you can lock me up. I'm just put you in a post. Like he's doing that to every single person. He has an answer to every single defender, and that is that's special, yo. Like I can't think of a lot of players that are kind of like, oh no no, I got I got like two three things, and you're not gonna be able to stop it. Like I can think of a player that has like one thing who's like, no, this this is it. Like that that's Kevin Durant's pull up. Nothing you can do about it, unless you're Boston. Luca's like, mm, no, no. I got like five different spots and I got like three different moves. You do the numbers and, we're, and I'm going to put up numbers. This yeah. Is the worst okay, this, host ever. <laughs> look, I mean, like, there, there's not a lot to add to that other than, What's like, that? is it yeah. wrong, right? Just looking at the, looking through, like, the box scores and whatever, and, like, the box scores only tell you so much, granted, but. Like if if I was playing the like if I was coaching against the Mavericks, is it wrong that like I wouldn't care that much if Lucas scored? No. Like it's true. You 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 don't care that much about what you can't stop. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, it's again that's not what I meant though. Just like I wouldn't really care about like trying to stop him from scoring. I'd rather try to like keep his teammates from doing anything. Because if Luca puts up 40, that's nice. But that, but that's not enough to win, you, to, to win a game. But if Jalen Brunson puts up 25 and Luca puts up 40, you're in trouble. But, yes, yeah, I can't have that being a thing because for the next 20 years, I have to argue and have to find ways to argue against Luca. Luca. So, like, I can't be having Remember, to. there's always the rings argument. Say again? There's always the rings argument. Yeah, if, if I was on ESPN. But, like, real basketball players are, like, mm-hmm. or bad basketball, you know, knowledgeable people don't use that argument as well. But it's, I, yeah, Lucas is good. <laughs> like, I don't even find him exciting to watch play basketball. He's just good. It's like mm, Tim Duncan. You're being nice. Hi. I'm thinking the old man that plays pickup with you, like he's just like, I got, I got two things I'm gonna do, and you, you, I'm too strong, and I've been doing this for thirty years. Sorry, and I know Luca's like younger than us, but he's been doing this for fifteen years. He's been a pro for fifteen years. Yes, yeah, kind. <laughs> that's it's crazy. That's ah. Uh. And everybody got mad at Dwarfus and uh, Lamelo over there. <laughs> okay, 